Welcome to the Moms Making Six Figures podcast, where it's all about real women, real stories, real inspiration. And now your host and creator of Moms Making Six Figures, Heidi Bartolotta. Thank you, Barbara Ryan, for doing this podcast interview with me. You're very welcome. My pleasure. We've known each other for a long time, so I'm happy to do it. <laughs> it's funny. I've said a couple of times, I don't think you really had a choice in the matter. <laughs> No, you could have said no, but I didn't think you would say no to me. So I would love it if you would start out talking about your background, just a little bit of who you are, where you come from. Mm -hmm. So I grew up in East St. Louis. I am the daughter of a Polish immigrant, and I went to medical school at the Mayo Clinic, two younger brothers, um, wonderful life, and at the same time, some real life real life things that not a whole lot of people go through growing up or later on in life. Mm -hmm. um, but uh, I went to medical school at the Mayo Clinic and had always decided to move to California. And my whole family's still mostly back there, but I left when I was 18. I was out the door. I think it would be really cool for you to talk about not only did you... Um, You've obviously been in medicine for a long time, but you not only practiced here, but you practiced in the military. You want to talk a little bit about that? Yeah. Always wanted to join the military. Always got talked out of it. My grandfather on my dad's side was in the Polish cavalry, and he was shot off his horse twice and captured by the Germans. And he went to a war camp, several war camps. And that was back in 1939. And then in 1949, he was finally released. And by that time, he was in a work camp. So I grew up thinking that the war ended in 1949. <laughs> My father was born in a war camp along with uh, aunt and uncle. And they came over to Ellis Island because they were supported by a sponsor. So, um, yeah, I really admired the stories that he told me. And then my mother's father, my grandfather on that side, he was also in the um, Army Air Force. And then my dad served in the Air Force during Vietnam. So I never considered our family a military family, but I really thought that that was one of the ultimate sacrifices to stand up for freedom and for your country. And finally, in general surgery, um, as I was becoming a general surgeon, 9-11 happened, and I joined the Navy as a, as a trauma surgeon and a general surgeon. How many tours did you do? I did three. Went to Afghanistan in October of 2001. No, 2001, right? <laughs> Seems like so long ago now when 9-11 happened. Um, Afghanistan, and then I went to Iraq in 2002, and Iraq again in 2003. And I, there are so many different directions I could go with you as far as asking questions and life lessons that I think that you have the ability to convey to people. Um, but why don't we go with when life doesn't go your way? Because you have an amazing background in medicine and one of the smartest people that I have been blessed to know in my life. And yet life is not always what you plan or expect, right? Right, right. Um, so life is a journey, an adventure. It's awesome. And it is also full of surprises. Mm. So I would say everyone wants to be successful, I think. And success does not come easy. And it always looks like this person has been extremely successful and it's been easy for that person. And, you know, so it's easy to make superfluous conclusions about people. And everyone has their challenges. So I would say, one, you have to know where you're going and not let fear hold you back. And when I say people have challenges, me personally, I lost my brother when I was 32 years old. My brother almost died just in the last month. 
and underwent an emergent lung transplantation. My mom just passed unexpectedly. I'm in medicine where I have that background, and my mom had a delayed lung cancer diagnosis. My dad had a heart issue the month later after she passed. Like if there's been a whirlwind just in the last two months, <laughs> I've had that, but everybody has their struggles. And I think focus is really important. Persevering is important. And your thoughts really create the direction of your life, right? So thoughts create your actions and those thoughts will emote feelings. And oftentimes those feelings bring you to either do something or not do something. So you can't live your life by feelings, but your thoughts are powerful. So thoughts lead to actions, which lead to habits, which lead to character. And character is something that, that guides your life. For me personally, um, I listen to a lot of podcasts. I have to take time away. I think everybody needs to do some type of self-care that looks different in everyone's life. For me, it's God. And I'm not here to preach. God is a relationship and God is the one focus in my life. My friends, you are a very, very dear friend very dear business partner, someone that I adore and I can truly rely upon. You're also human and you have your own life. So my relationship with my creator is really the one, the one thing, the one book that I go to. There's a lot said about money and success in the Bible, um, but it's really the relationship. But I also have some certain rules. So in the morning, I will really just focus on my cup of coffee because that fills me up and I might pick up my phone, but it is to read something personal, whether it's God's word or something uplifting, but it's not to check all my texts or my emails because we're barraged by all of that. Mm -hmm. And I listen to different podcasts too. Um, I really like right now, uh, Lewis Howe's The School of Greatness. Mm -hmm. He's an amazing man with what he's accomplished in his life, and he's a great interviewer. Mm -hmm. So the people that he interviews are eclectic. You know, they're well-known actors, well-known people. There's also scientists that are not well-known, but their discoveries are some people in his life. So I take away from a lot of that. Mm -hmm. And everybody has their gifts, and we're meant to work together. So I, I, I think in what I've, what I've done in my career and in my life is I write myself up each time that something happens, whether it can be viewed as good or bad, but to write myself. And I would encourage men and women to do the same thing. I certainly don't have all the answers, but to focus and to have something that's solid that they can actually know that will ground them and mm -hmm. that will also comfort them. So you took my question away from me. I didn't even get to ask you a book or podcast. <laughs> I know you, you I know, know me so well. I know. I'll sit there and I'll just talk and talk and talk and talk. I know you so well and you know me so well. So I didn't even have to ask you the question. <laughs> so our listeners, those aspiring to six figures. Mm -hmm. And I know you and I have had so many conversations about this over the years. It's not the money. It's what the money does. Or how, I think for some, how that makes them feel. Because you, you know this about me. For me, it was just peace that I didn't have to worry about those things, right? Mm -hmm. um, but talk a little bit about maybe some of the lessons that you would give Josie or a younger woman that is wanting to create their version of success. What would you pass on? So Josie is my daughter. Yes, Josie is her daughter. And came out of foster care um, initially. And she has all kinds of reasons not to be a successful mom and not to be a grateful person. Mm -hmm. So um, I'm blessed to actually have her grow into the beautiful woman that she is today. And she's pregnant with her third. I, I, I think lots of times we talk ourselves out of the success that we can have and reaching our potential. I certainly haven't reached my potential. I strive to do that. And I strive to encourage other men and women to reach their potential too. That's not always easy for sure. So I think focus, grounding. I would encourage anybody to truly, if they wonder if they're, and I forgive me if I sound like I'm preaching, but if they wonder if there really is a God, 
ask God. If you're angry at God, talk to God. He will respond. Um, but to believe in yourself and to get better. That fear and perfectionism, those two things in comparison, I guess three things. Mm -hmm. Fear of failure, comparison, and just really wondering if you can actually accomplish something. It stops so many people. I know it stopped me in several moments of my life. And then to work through, there's lots of things that, you know, that I don't enjoy that I do to actually achieve success, whether that's doing the hard stuff or the paperwork or getting up early or I love my bed. I love being under <laughs> the covers. <laughs> but really making whatever it is that I'm going after, what somebody's going after, to make it their thing mm -hmm. and to prioritize. There's a lot of things a very wise woman, <laughs> my aunt, told me, um, don't sweat the small stuff. Because most of it, when you have big stuff, you realize how much is small stuff. And don't you think this year has, for you in particular, but for a lot of people, has really made that very, very prominently known? Absolutely. Mm -hmm. For a lot of people. Mm -hmm. I mean, we're going through a whole nother era, socially, politically, medically. Mm -hmm. It's stressful for people. The interesting thing for me in all of this this year is I'm so incredibly blessed in my life and I have amazing friends like you. And, you know, when I am very overwhelmed or concerned with something medical, I have these incredible resources to pull on that I trust and I know have my best interest at heart. And I think a lot of our country doesn't have that necessarily, right? And I can't imagine the stress level in just not knowing, right? And where that goes with people. But I think that that plays into business as well. Because mm -hmm. when you think about someone wanting to achieve something and just not knowing whether or not they can or they should or... And I think that's one of the things that you were saying, right? Absolutely. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. You just don't know. And instead of being scared about whether or not you're a fail or whether or not it's possible, you just have to do that day. And sometimes it's hour by hour and sometimes it's day by day. And sometimes you can plan your week mm -hmm. and just go with it and get better. Mm -hmm. Choose a direction, get better. I mean, that's, that's what I did when I, you know, I, I closed my surgical practice a few years ago and went into business helping men and women replace an income or supplements an income and the emphasis on, you know, nutrition and safety in the home and that type of thing. I had no idea what that would look like, mm -hmm. but I knew that I would be willing to learn mm -hmm. and to do the right thing. We all need to pay our bills. So I'm not saying that <laughs> I'm at all, you know, some Mother Teresa um, but we all feel good when we actually give to others and we focus and we do that with passion. Mm -hmm. And you can do that and you can create income. Mm -hmm. I watch you come alive when you invest in other people. So maybe talk a little bit about that for you because you do have this incredible, incredible background of knowledge and understanding of the human body. But yet the thing that I see light you up the most is when you are giving to others. So how has that played in to your success in medicine, but also your success in business? I think it's, I think it's relationships. And they're exhausting. Relationships are exhausting, right? But when you can guide somebody and actually show them what's possible and their potential and their gifts, I'm... I think that one of the things that God gave me is that I'm very good at identifying others' gifts and drawing them out and helping them also see that. Mm -hmm. And that is so, I'm grateful for it. I'm grateful for all of my medical background to help apply that to my family. I mean, never in a million years would I think that my other brother would have a disease where he needed new lungs. Mm -hmm. You know, that's unimaginable with that. And I also see a lot of, a lot of people now going through that where they're struggling. So for my dad and for my brother, 
they're not familiar with medicine. They're also not super savvy online. And it realizes to me how hard it is for people that haven't learned how to navigate online or electronic records or those types of things to access medical care. Mm -hmm. So now in my mind, I'm thinking, okay, that I need to be aware of. And maybe I can help either that system or help a few people, Mm -hmm. but it's really opened up my eyes. So I really enjoy the investment into others and relationships. And you can do that in a lot of ways, whether it's just to help them have a better day or to help them in business. Mm -hmm. And really, I think that's what we need to do in business, Mm -hmm. right? That's really what business is about. There's certain people that are scared of like, I shouldn't say scared, but sales, you know, like business is some bad term, but we all operate in the business world and in the relationship world, Mm -hmm. you know? It, it should be all even and fair. Everybody operate the same, but we're people. That's not gonna, it's not going to happen that way. So I really enjoy the relationships. I know. Yeah. So what am I not asking you? So you know the makeup of our <clears throat> followers. Mm-hmm. There are women aspiring to six figures, other women that I are at six figures, but we're more their counterparts. What am I not asking that you think could provide some value? Um, I think think I'm a big advocate for keeping it simple. Although I know that I really like education and could dive into some little minuscule, I'm a scientist by heart, so go that way. But to keep things simple. So you probably heard, heard me say this, which has always been very helpful, instructive for me. Dr. Charles Stanley talks about the acronym HALT which is never make a decision when you're hungry, angry, lonely, or tired. And working moms and moms and parents and women, um, not to leave out the men, but women are different than men. Men are different than women. So with women, I think it's very easy to get overwhelmed in your children, in your career, in your spouse, in your appearance, in all of those things. I was speaking with a good friend yesterday, and she is a nurse, and she's like, I have all of these plans to do things. And then at least to get on the cycle for 10 minutes, I think of everything that I need to do and I'm exhausted and I don't do any of it. (laughs) So you can spin yourself up. So just think hungry, angry, lonely, or tired. You need to give yourself a break. Your mind can only take so much. You start again the next day or take a 10 minute break and then go back to it. Um, And then I uh, had a really good, when so, someone had said, okay, one, two, three, go. I know there's a book written on that and, and that type of thing, but if you can do it now, just go ahead and do it. Caveat, you got to be careful of that because if you're in your home, which so many people are right now, you could do laundry, you could clean, you could work, you could, you know, make <laughs> dinner. There's, you could drink yourself to death, whatever it is. Um, so there's lots of things, but if you can do it now or one, two, three, go, so you don't get caught up in your, in your head. And I know for you, you have to exercise. Like mm-hmm. you would always tell me, go out, you're better when you exercise. Mm-hmm. So for some people that really helps people for others. It's not necessarily the thing. Mm -hmm. I like to listen on Fridays. There's a podcast called Science Friday. It's totally entertainment. It's totally random science. But sometimes I hear something, I'm like, oh, that's kind of interesting. I'll bring that. So it's it's just relaxation. Mm -hmm. But I I would say the biggest thing is go for it. That's the biggest thing. Go for it. The challenges that you have in your life are just, they're obstacles. They make you a better person and better character. And there is a light at the end of the tunnel somewhere. <laughs> I'm so I'm going to wrap up with this. I, I know you better than most people. And one of the things that so inspires me about you and always has is what you just said, go for it. Because you did it in terms of your education, you did it in terms of your practice and where you went with your practice into the military when you decided that medicine wasn't going to serve you the way that you needed and wanted it to, you went for it into an entrepreneurial venture. I've watched you go for it over and over and over and over again. And I just want to thank you for the example because I think you're amazing. So thank you. And thank you for doing this with me. Absolutely. My pleasure. And to everybody who's going for it, Mm -hmm. I tell them to just go for it. Believe in yourself. Yes. Believe in yourself and go for it.
You'll get lots of naysayers, maybe even your spouse and your loved ones and your families. Don't listen. Go for it anyway. Go for it anyway. (laughs) Mm -hmm. Thank you, Heidi. Thank you for listening to the Moms Making Six Figures podcast. If you enjoyed this podcast, please take a moment and leave a review on iTunes. To learn more about Moms Making Six Figures, head over to momsmakingsixfigures.com. That's right, momsmakingsixfigures.com.